Very simply, how much further does the dollar have to fall? What's your view on that? I think it's quite a bit to fall um, in, in the coming months. Uh, basically, we've got a huge boost uh, for, for the euro in, in the form of the uh, uh, EU agreement. This is really, really solid. And this is where we've continued to see the dollar weaken after that agreement went through. But look, the U.S. has lost its tailwind from interest rates. We're going to get that even reinforced this week as the Federal Reserve Board moves, out, moves away from stabilization back to accommodation. The shortage of U.S. dollars is gone. And, you know, what's really holding the dollar in place right now is equity markets. We're seeing that exceptionalism fade right now. So as the Opposed to a gradual decline, we might even see a free fall of the U.S. equity markets continue to decline precipitously. So that is just by potentially getting another stimulus package being secured later on this week. And despite the fact that we are, you know, cautiously starting to see the signs of a stabilisation when it comes to virus cases? This is the one thing why uh, I think there's the bears, uh, or, or, or I should say the bulls are being a little bit reticent to fall into that bear trap right now. There's a lot of uh, noise going on in the background. We've got the U.S.-China trade tensions that continue to simmer. We've also got the fact that stocks didn't make, um, did make runs higher on good numbers, and that's a worrying sign. And obviously, behind the COVID narrative, there's still that lingering economic beat down. It almost, we're going to almost move to what I believe is like a growth divergence trade. Those economies that emerge from a COVID quicker are going to do better, therefore, the currency will deal. Right now, the U.S lagging in that. But listen, never count out the power of the U.S. consumer. And that's one thing we have to keep always front and focus when we're shorting the dollar. Yeah, and of course, dollar weakness has also helped some commodities, especially the gold and other precious metals really rallying. And that's not only because of the weak dollar, of course, it's a macro environment. This GTV chart on the Bloomberg, uh, Stephen, also showing the relative performance of precious metals when it comes to the broad commodity markets as a percentage of balance sheets, as a percentage of GDP uh, continues to rise, those balance sheets and central bank easing. We have seen gold futures pricing at a record right now, how much further up can it go? It's interesting. Um, you know, we're looking at investors right now with the dollar falling over the last couple of weeks quite quickly. Uh, they're out looking for alternative assets to hedge that falling dollar. Obviously, gold has been in the highlight. I think uh, uh, gold is a little bit more to go here. I, I don't think um, you, you can give up right now. Clearly, I think it's going to breach the, the 1920 uh, level, which is really the big all-time high here. But I think what it's getting triggered by mostly um, is the beneficiary um, not only of safe haven demand, but it's also the beneficiary of falling yields, and this is really the key signpost. So if you factor in another 2% decline in the U.S. dollar broad trade weighted average, perhaps another 35% rise in 10-year inflation break even, that would move us to about 185. And perhaps nominal yeah, 10-year Treasury yields falling in, let's say, another 30 basis points to sort of around that uh, 0.25 level. I think that'll put us up to 2,000. But for me, it's very much tied in the hip to what uh, bond yields are doing. So the question is rather, can gold keep on rallying? Is really one of which can real yields keep on falling. So I think we have to be really cognizant of how the real yield markets are, 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 are playing out right now.